Indeed, yes, I'm going to handle the questions. So thanks to our speakers. Does anybody want to ask questions? You can put up your hand either. Well, I'll try and spot them if you're waving your hands uh, physically, but there's also the little um, raise your hand. You can stick things in the chat, uh, send them to me privately or another member of the committee uh, of team. So I'm looking to see if anybody has a hand up here at the moment. Oh, well, Ben has a hand up. It looks like I can't actually raise a hand in the participants list. Is that I've been disbarred? Very, that's, very exclusive. Okay. I think of making co-hosts unable to raise their hands. Anyway, uh, I blame Zoom. I have a question for Lewis, which was actually just a re reminder. There was a particular quote from David, and I've forgotten David's surname. There was something about making sure you hear everyone's viewpoints. Could could you say that quote again? I found it very striking. Uh, yeah. So the um, it's paraphrased, but it's a simple concept. It's about telling everyone's story. It's about seeing the narrowness through which we've been viewing the world. I was struck by that. Um, and I, this is I, I'm in danger of doing that. This is not a question, this is a statement, but I just wanted to say how struck I was with it, particularly in mathematics, because of the all of mathematics is uh, discussing, did it have to be this way? Could it have been a different way? And whether that's the cultural expectations of the way we count, like the base 10 thing you mentioned, or the way we write stuff. And I, I guess I'd, I don't, I'd love to hear more about your ideas of how we do more of that in mathematics, but I just thought it was really important to focus on. Mathematics is full of this historical context, and particularly as a subject which is based on, is it true or is it just a convention? We're guiltier than most subjects of sort of forgetting that boundary. That wasn't a question, and I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, no, I mean, yeah, I think that's, that's and it's fascinating for me, even as a, a non-mathematician, to start thinking about that. And I think it becomes quite philosophical, but, you know, and that's the really positive spin about it. It's not, you know, I feel a lot of people who hear decolonizing and they think it's about tearing everything up, and it's not. It's about adding to. It's about, you know, and, and there's, we talk about the benefits of diversity. It's this diversity of those stories, because it is absolutely fascinating what could have been and what, you know, and, and I think there's a richness in that that can be, um, that is, you know, such a positive, like, spin yeah. on what, what a lot of people are really afraid of. You know, they're afraid that we're going to burn the books, and it's not about that. It's just about adding more to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Excellent. Okay, great. Um, the, does anybody else have a question? You know, as I say, you can stick it in the chat or... Um, okay, I can't see anybody hand up. Oh, Andy. Andy, Andy, Andy. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I was on the other screen. That's just, uh, right, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, um, I mean, just to kind of add on to what Luis was saying, and um, again, as, as I say, um, a lot of what Lewis said really resonated with me. Um, uh, and this decolonizing uh, idea, uh, again, yes, I agree totally. We shouldn't be afraid of that. And, and uh, really, we're, we're adding to, to, to the richness of, of, of what's already there. And everything, um, I won't say everything, but uh, it's worthy to just remember that there's two sides to every story and if you can tell both sides of the story at the same time richer still um, one of the things that we are doing uh, in the science museum group is recognizing that some of our exhibits um, aren't telling the whole story um, and we are now looking at ways in which we can um, show exhibits and tell the whole story, warts and all, of, of, of some of our exhibits and, and some of the inventors behind um, our exhibits. That's all I wanted to say, really. Okay, thank, thank you for that. Um, yeah. is, does anybody want to ask uh, another question? Because I do have one. Oh, Sam, Sam, please. Um. It's kind of a question for for everyone, really. So I think one of the things that um, Sam was going to mention, I think we've we've sort of touched on it all the way through, um, was about working with groups. If you want to do something for people in a particular audience, work with groups that represent that audience to do that thing. So so for the one of the science, um, the global science shows, he worked with the minorities in STEM group and things like that. So my question for sort of everyone really is, do you have any particular recommendations of groups um, to work with that would what, that represent or work well with different audiences? And it's thinking about that thing of, 
even if you are part of that audience, your experiences aren't necessarily representative of the whole. So it's really important to get in all those all those different viewpoints. So and it's not just to the speakers here that I'm asking this, it's to, to everyone um, as to what what are your recommendations of good people to work with to reach different audiences or to to make sure you're providing support in the right way for different people and things like that. And it's not necessarily something that we can cover in a big list now in the sort of eight minutes that we've got left. But if you think of something later, please do share it with us and we will make sure that that we can share that with everyone else as well. Don't know if there are any immediate responses to that though. <laughs> I can see people thinking. <laughs> Yeah, they may come through in the chat in a moment. I have another general question which people can drop into the chat, but uh, it was in the first talk, which was talking about accessibility in, in all sorts of media that we send out and screen readers got mentioned and very importantly so, but mathematics has a particular challenge on this and I'm out of my depth. I'm wondering if anybody in the room has any experience of, imagine a PDF of LaTeX mathematics. How does a screen reader cope with that? I've heard rumors that it doesn't. And I've also heard rumors that Microsoft Word equation editor does better, but I, I wonder if anyone has experience with this. Uh, it's a yeah. particularly mathematical question, I think. Uh, yeah, indeed I do. Um, I, I, the London Mathematical Society, have, we've put together something. There's a, there's a website, um, which I can't remember. It's something stroke accessibility, I think. I can look it out. Um, but yeah, that, that can be dealt with. Um, and it is a big story and then nobody has got the real answer yet, I don't think. So it's a difficult one where you're going to have to compromise at some point on something. Um, there is no final answer. Um, Thanks, Kim. So, so that, that, that's an easy one, an easy one to answer for the moment. And we could do a whole session on that, I think. Um, well, so I anybody, commented that we might we might have to do that in the future. But sorry. Yeah. So does anybody have any comments about um, the looking for different organisations and perhaps broadening it out? So I, I as a organiser uh, for the London Math Society, you know, how how do I make sure the lineup is representative um, and you know how, how do I find speakers outside of my usual contacts I mean perhaps perhaps putting Sam's question that way um, does any any of our speakers like to, to jump in there I can answer that um, I would say go to places like minorities and some because um, so for example um, we would probably be able to say uh, to actually do a call out and say oh is anybody interested in doing this uh, or we might actually know someone to, to put it simply. So ask existing networks is what I would say on that. So are there other networks um, apart from just uh, minorities in STEM? Um, there's also STEM Village, Pride in STEM, if you're looking for LGBTQ plus ones. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones off it's, the top of my head. Uh, 500 women scientists and 500 queer scientists where you just get a map and you can like find people from pretty much anywhere. I'll, I'll add links to that. Right. Uh, I hope Katie's uh, putting those to the chat. <laughs> Do any of our other speakers have um, suggestions in that area? Brad? I think also um, for the for the Twitter savvy, it can be really useful to. I know it's not perfect, um, but something that Ellie and I have done have has been like looking at, say, the Twitter accounts of STEM Village or Pride and STEM or. Um, these other organizations to see like who's either hosted them for minorities in STEM or um, who's been like hosting events or who are mentioned because that's just another way to to find people. <laughs> it's really it's really useful. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. And also think internationally. I think that's that's a really you know, and I think there's, I, well, there's two sides to that. So I think I think really. Um, locally as well. So people who are like different organizations, which might be offline and not on Twitter, because um, it's only a tiny minority of people who are on Twitter generally, but also internationally, I think also, because I think there are some great networks like Falling Walls, um, which are doing loads of work around STEM engagement. There's Excite in Europe. Um, and actually, I've, I put together a bit of a document in terms of different um, networks, which I can share. I've just put it into the chat as well, which might be useful. And also think across sectors as well. So I think especially when you are looking at things like, you know, more broader themes around justice. To be honest, I think actually arts and culture, generally, the conversations around that are way more advanced than they are in STEM, even if, I mean, it's not as if the, the world is that, that much more fairer, but at least the conversations are more advanced. So uh, definitely look outside of, of, of sectors too. 
just um, to add Ooh. sorry um, i was just going to say that um in my role as a stem ambassador um i mean we also we work with with organizations yeah but we also work with businesses who have very well developed um, ideas around dealing with um, diverse groups. And I'm willing to kind of like, um, I won't put it in the chat now, but I'll, I'm willing to kind of like provide one or two businesses that might be able to kind of like help you with that. I don't know if that, if that would help at all. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Sarah, were you about to say something? Yeah, sorry. Um, the other thing, just to kind of add on to what I was saying about the Global Science Show, is the great thing, the reason why I really like it as uh, as a platform is that it's a good testing ground for things, but also means that you, for any, they have evidence of what they've done. So if they have done a video, you can actually see what are they like as a presenter or a speaker. Um, so for you who's looking for speakers, then you have, you're like, oh yeah, they're like, they're, they're like this, they, they seem great. Um, and I know that um, places like the STEM Village have also recorded, um, got some recordings, Pride and STEM also have some recordings as well. So it's worth looking out for those things. So not just names, but actually, so you can see what they're like as a speaker and what they talk about, that could be really helpful. Right, indeed. Right, so we're, we're getting close to time now. Um, I did notice there was another question in the chat about, uh, has anyone asked uh, people from international audiences? And, and I think my, my own experience is yes, because we did a um, um, Maths Week Scotland where we had a speaker from um, the United States. So, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a brilliant opportunity now. Everybody's used to, to this sort of behavior of uh, gi giving talks online. So it's a good chance to, to nab somebody from abroad while, while, while the going's good. Um, so I think we're coming up to, to 5.30. So shall we wrap up then? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, um, need to, I need to I remind just, you. Yeah, I was just going to jump in and say that we've had a, a brilliant collection of links and stuff in the chat. We're going to try and put together a useful document from this and we'll run it by all the speakers as well to see if there's anything they can add. But we'll share that um, with our networks and put it a link to it alongside the video for this with all of these useful links and things. And anything you have to add to that document, please do.